Hi, I'm Sergey from Atomic Jar, and I have John from Red Hat here representing Quarkus. Hi, John. Uh, hi, Sergey. Uh, yeah, my name is John Klingen. I'm a product manager at Red Hat. Um, I work with the Quarkus community, and I'm also heavily involved in MicroProfile and Jakarta EE in the Java community as well. We hear so many great stories from uh, our users, our task containers users, talking about Quarkus and how they're using Quarkus together with task containers. And since we created something new here at Atomic Jar, I really want to first hear from you about how Quarkus integrates with task containers and how our new product will help your users. Do you have some application to show? Uh, yes, I do. And um, uh, if you'd like, I can just share the screen right now and get right into it. That's what I like the most, demos. OK, so what you see here is a very simple Java application. And what we're going to be doing is showing Quarkus and a feature called Dev Services and how it integrates with Test Containers and, um, more specifically, Test Containers Cloud. So um, what I'm doing specifically with Dev Services, Dev Services is a feature in Quarkus that allows developers that have a client-side dependency to some backend service to automatically instantiate that backend service um, during development. So I have a very simple application, and you can see highlighted on the screen right now, I have a dependency on uh, JDBC, um, Postgres in particular, right? So I have a dependency on Postgres, but I don't have um, any configuration for configuring the application to talk to Postgres. So with Quarkus, you do your configuration in a file called application properties, right? And you can see that here, and it's very empty. So when I start this application, Quarkus is going to use test containers to automatically instantiate um, Postgres um, on the fly with zero configuration, right? That's Which awesome. is a really new, um, a really new feature. Yeah, cool feature. That's awesome. When, when we created test containers, we didn't even think that it will be used for I know, local development because our focus was always on in integration testing. But it's so, it's so great to see it being used for that. Please continue. Oh yeah, I mean Java is kind of going through. Um, I, I think this this new era of innovation where there's lots of great things happening with native compilation and test containers being used for development. <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a great time. So show me both native compilation and well, at least a native friendly uh, framework and test containers. Yeah, I don't know if I'll do native compilation um, only because um, this machine with all the screen sharing going on and my green screen behind me, it will like tank the CPU and probably take a couple minutes to do. But um, this application as is can compile the native very easily. Um, now, uh, just to give you a, a brief idea about what the domain is here, we're, we're going to be storing JPA entities into the database that is being instantiated by Quarkus using test containers and in, in Quarkus Dev Services. Okay, now um, you can see here that it's if you're familiar with with Java and JPA, it's a very simple Java object that we're using something called Hibernate ORM with Panache that lets you create very simple Java objects that are persisted to a database. Right, so um, we're going to be storing a person um, into a person table in in the database. And it's a it's a data entity. It's a JPA entity, more specifically. So this is like five lines of code. Um, and then I'm going to show you um, a feature in Quarkus that basically generates all the rest endpoints for manipulating that uh, JPA entity in the database. So that means creating, updating, deleting, you know, CRUD operations. So the way you do that in Quarkus uh, very easily is you um, define an interface. It's called people resource. And you just extend this um, this interface panache entity resource, and you pass in the entity that you want to manage, um, person, and then the data type of its primary key, which is just an ever incrementing integer by default um, provided by panache. I so, like how it is convention over configuration all the place, like it's, uh, it's everywhere, be it Dev Services or uh, GPA and everything. Really cool. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, Quarkus has a very um, strong emphasis on developer productivity. So I don't know if I've mentioned, but we do live coding where you can make any change you want, um, and it just updates live. You don't have to recompile and rerun. Um, mm -hmm. Continuous testing built in. Um, it's it's really productive. Okay. Okay. And now the most interesting part: test containers. Test containers. So on this system, um, I do not have Docker running. Right. You can imagine there's 
Um, you know, some have the new Mac M1 chip architecture, Macs, I guess. Um, and that doesn't necessarily run all containers that well yet. Um, and, you know, some enterprises actually don't allow installing Docker or MidiCube or anything like that locally. So that kind of puts us at a bit of a disadvantage with dev services. And what I can show, if you want, Sergey, is how we can use Test Containers Cloud to enable us to run these containers um, off host with very minimal effort. Yes, please, because that's exactly the reason why we created Test Containers Cloud. I guess that's the same feedback we've been hearing, uh, like your users and our users will be telling us the same that they may not have Docker on their machines, but they still want to use all these awesome features such as DevTools and integration testing with containers. So let, let's try how Test Containers Cloud, Cloud works for your application. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to run Test Containers Cloud Desktop. Uh, this is a very lightweight process that runs um, uh, in unprivileged and non-privileged mode on your desktop. So you can just install this off your home directory. And um, it's a very lightweight process that basically forwards the Docker request that you might normally send, that dev services might normally send, and forwards them to uh, the test, cont test containers cloud. So I'm going to go ahead and start that. I guess your and basis I, of, of it being lightweight is especially important given that you just say that you have a lot of CPU being used for your green screen. So I guess not having to run containers on your machine will also be helpful to this session. Yeah, it's not evident yet because up here in the right upper right hand, you might be able to see, it might be fairly small. You can kind of see my my, my CPU. As soon as I start Quarkus, then it's going to, um, you know, get a little bit more, my CPU is going to get a little bit more busy. So, so far mm -hmm. it's not that bad, but we'll see. So we have Test Containers Cloud running, and I'm going to start up Quarkus in developer mode. Normally, this takes about two or three seconds um, to start. Um, now, if you compile a Quarkus application to a, an Uber jar or whatever, it, it'll start in under a second in native binary. This application would probably start in about 30 milliseconds. But uh, when you're in dev mode, um, <laughs> running a green screen while recording a, uh, uh, a video, it does take a, a lot more CPU. You can kind of see that up on the right hand, mm -hmm. the, the CPU now. Okay. And so now we're, we're up and running and uh, connected to um, Test Containers Cloud. And you can kind of see the, the uh, Postgres database layers being pulled um, into mm -hmm. the Test Containers Cloud um, environment. So we, we should now have Test Containers um, up and running with dev services. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here to uh, another terminal window and I am going to actually put some data in the database. Let's see if this actually works here. And there we go, right? So you, you saw, um, I think a total of seven lines of code from Quarkus. Um, we've started um, uh, up test containers running Postgres with zero configuration right? Really productive environment for developers. You just start coding basically. So let's, let's put one more in there. Um, so you can see now this has an ID of two um, before it was an ID of one. And now if I do a git, you'll see that we have the two objects that we posted Ooh. in. So for, you know, the purposes that I have here of just doing, you know, normal iterative development, this is actually performing quite well, um, even though I'm again doing green screen and everything like <laughs> that. What I really um, like is that uh, you said that Quarkus Dev Services means that you need, like, you don't have to add any lines to your application to start running your application with test containers. And I kind of like to see that Test Containers Cloud takes it to the next step without adding any lines to your code or any changes to your existing project. You can also run it with uh, Test Containers Cloud uh, on environments, for example, where you don't have Docker or you don't want to run Docker. Um, so yeah, it's. This zero config every, everywhere, uh, I think, is the future of uh, DevTools, and I'm sure developers will appreciate it. Yeah, Quarkus has basically baked in support for test containers out of the box. And the fact that, that you guys just added a lightweight daemon that just redirects the request to test containers cloud is just you know um, another really great addition, I think, for Quarkus developers. There is one more thing I'd like to show you if we have time. Always. All right, awesome. So I'd like to show you the integration of test containers with um, testing, Quarkus testing. Oh, yes, please. Okay, so I've got um, a simple test class that basically mimics that post request that you saw earlier. 
where we're, we're posting Duke age 28 to the people endpoint. Uh, we should get back a status HTTP status code of 201, which is created. And then we verify that in the return JSON, we have a name of Duke with uh, being an age of 28, right? Now, now we are Quarkus talking. Has... I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I'm a testing uh-huh. guy. And uh, this dev, dev services thing, I know that it's amazing. And maybe developers will appreciate it. But uh, now we are talking. That's what I want to see, running tasks with Quarkus and test containers. Well, I could take that a step further, actually, because Quarkus has, and I think I mentioned it earlier, has built-in continuous testing, which means that when I am editing code, as soon as I save the file, it just reruns the tests, right? And what's really nice is the first time it runs all the tests, but after that, it just runs the tests that it thinks are relevant to the code that you change. So it's actually super productive. Nice. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, resume testing. Um, So by default, continuous testing is, is turned off when you start. And you can see down here that it says press R to resume testing. Oops, sorry, over here. So I'm going to go ahead and resume testing. So in 2010, we were restarting tests. In 2020s, we are resuming tests. And I really like this shift. Well, I guess it's called test containers for a reason, right? (laughs) (laughs) True, true. Right, so normally, um, you can see here it took 13 seconds. Again, some some green screen running and stuff. But, you know, normally the first time it runs through all the tests. But after that, if I go through and I start making changes, um, you'll see, like, I I could even come in here. uh, Let me try this out. This is something I haven't even tested my dry runs. But (laughs) I'm going to put down, uh, Sergey, uh, you are now 28 years old. Okay. And I'm going to save the file. Yeah, I'm going to save the file, um, and we're going to run the test here. And there we go, right? So three seconds that time. Um, but normally, it's it's like sub-second to, to rerun the test. So um, yeah, and I, I should mention that what's also happening here behind the scenes is that Quarkus is actually instantiating a second Postgres um, container using test containers and, of course, test container cloud, because that's what Hmm. we're running, so that the data in your dev database doesn't kind of pollute your test database, right? So Hmm, it's a pristine test environment. You always start with fresh state. Yeah. So we have two instances running right now in in test container cloud. Nice. And it's great to see it all working. And it's great that in this five minutes demo, we were able to run this thing on our cloud environment, which is a major step uh, from what previous experience with test containers it was. So it's great to see that Quarkus just worked with test containers cloud. And many thanks for uh, demoing it to me. Oh, no problem. Thank you very much for inviting me and letting uh, letting me show uh, test containers users Quarkus. I'm looking forward to hearing from your users uh, as a next step, how they are using Test Containers Cloud with Quarkus. Thank you, John. Thanks, Sergey.